Chrysler EVAP leak detection system. Chrysler uses unique EVAP leak detection system. It's a leak detection pump that's mechanically operated. It has no electrical seal solenoid for the vent. It has no fuel tank pressure sensor. It's using springs and sensors and weights and closing micro switches. Let's talk about the other systems. The natural vacuum leak detection uses a switch that closes on a vacuum. The EVAP system integrity uses a switch that closes. We're going to use different things in here to do that. Let's start with the leak detection pump. The leak detection pump is a diaphragm that's pulled up by vacuum under computer control. The computer control calls, turns vacuum off and on in order to pull this off. As soon as the, the diaphragm comes off its base, when it's being pulled up by vacuum, it seals the vent, which is spring-loaded. The solenoid is going to be controlled by the computer by monitoring a reed switch at the top of the system. When the diaphragm is up, the reed switch is closed, and it keeps pumping until it pumps it up and holds it closed. At the time it pumps it up, it's going to have a pressure about 3 to 6 inches, and how long it holds this pressure will be determined very much like the, the vacuum decay system we talked about earlier. Here's the pump. First, let's look at the voltmeter. It reads battery voltage on the reed switch, the yellow wire, because the con contact in the top of the diaphragm is not closing the switch. Vacuum switching valve is closed. It's blocking manifold vacuum. If we open it up and let manifold vacuum pull the diaphragm up, it closes the micro switch and micro switch goes to zero. The computer now knows diaphragm is in the up mode. It's going to de-energize the solenoid, close vacuum, let the spring push it down to create pressure. It's going to turn off and on in a pumping action till we get to our 3 to 6 inches H2O of pressure. Then it'll hold it, and the computer is going to time it. Don't worry, we have diagrams to show this. So the big thing is we're going to have this coming in here with vacuum and pulling it open and closing the reed switch. Leak detection pump can be tested in the service bay with some scan tools, and it tells you all about what it's going to do. It's going to pump it up and run it regardless of the temperature and fuel level and give you a, a relatively good indication of whether it'll work or not. And it'll come back and tells you what it's got, whether it's got a 40,000 test, whether it's running, and so forth. Here's what it looks like on a lab scope when it's running. On the left, our duty cycle starts pumping, and there's our reed switch on the bottom. It pumps up and stays closed, and then eventually, after we pumped it up, the computer stops cycling the uh, the, the uh, vacuum switching valve, and we just leave it closed, as you see on the right. And we wait until the end of the test, and eventually it's going to open back up and everything's done. The length of time it stays pressurized tells us about the leak. So this is a very unique system in that we're going to look at a micro switch in order to determine this. And the micro switch is controlled by the position of the diaphragm. If the diaphragm goes down and falls, it's because we have a lack of pressure. Now, here on the left was our normal one. We started pumping, and immediately the switch closes, open one time, and then stays closed for the rest of the test. On the right, the switch continuously keeps opening up, and we continuously have to run the duty cycle on the vacuum switching valve. So this is an example of how it knows it has a leak. This can manage to, to do this to test a 20,000-inch vacuum leak. Let's take a look at our leak detection pump mode 6 information. Mode 6 data is a short list that covers a 40,000th, a 20,000th link, and a pinch line. The descriptions gives us a good diagnostic direction. It tells us what we need to know. Now, the enabling conditions for this are very much like the enabling conditions for the vacuum decay, very strange, it has to set for a long time. The engine temperature has to be just right. So it may be a long time before these are replaced and the monitor finally runs. Again, cautioning you, this information is not live. Looking at our three parameter IDs down here, we got a 40,000, 20,000 leak. It times it, tells us which one passes. If it holds pressure, for a good long time, it passes the 20,000s. And one thing we have that's unique in Chrysler is if this pumps up too quickly and not filling a large volume, the system knows it's pumping into a pinched hose and sets a pinched hose. The bottom line is mode 6 gives us about all the information we need to know to see what's going on. 
Just remember, it can be just as difficult to get this to run as it was to get the vacuum decay system to run we talked about earlier. It's the natural vacuum approaches they'll be using next is going to be able to run under more conditions.